Hi, my name is Dr. Todd Cunningham, and this is the first of a series of videos I'm creating so that we can have a conversation about mental health. This video is kind of a foundational video because we're going to be talking about stress, which is actually one of the foundation pieces around mental health. See, stress, which is just how much energy our bodies are processing at any time, is actually a good thing. See, if you had zero stress in your life, you're actually dead. We always have some stress because our bodies are always working to some degree. And in fact, um, we need a certain level of stress for us to actually be very engaged. You kind of think about the beginning of term, you open up your syllabus, you see those due dates that are way off in the future, We're not too motivated or engaged to get working on th those projects. But as those dates come, as our stress levels and worries kind of come to those about those projects, suddenly we hit a point where we often can really engage in that work. Or maybe it's just before a presentation. You know, you can sit there and kind of get yourself building up. You, your stress levels go up as you get ready to engage in the presentation, which is your need is so that you can have the energy to be able to think critically on the spot, to be able to engage your audience and be able to deliver the material that you want to deliver. However, there's a point when that stress level can then go too high. And as that stress level starts to go too high, our body starts to go into some defense mechanisms. See, in general, our brains are actually quite lazy. They don't want to have a high level of stress. They actually want us to be in a pretty relaxed state. However, as we go up in that stress level, then finally our brain starts to engage. And the first engagement that our brain says, our first defensive mechanism is actually a social engagement mechanism. As we start to feel really stressed, we typically look for someone in our environment, someone safe in our environment to be able to turn to, to be able to kind of bring them in, either by talking to them or physically actually bringing them into the event to be able to help us feel safe. We can see this with little babies. You know, a mother or father is going down the street with their child and a stranger comes up. The baby looks at the stranger and they start to feel stress. I don't know who this is. This, is, this could be a danger. I don't know what this is. And they look up to the parent and the parent looks okay. The child goes, oh, the world's okay. And then they relax. Social engagement. Even though know, with my daughters, we go into a large room to kind of grab onto our, our leg. We might go into a new social situation and we might be going with someone and we kind of huddle close to them. So at first, so that we have that social engagement, someone to help us to ease into this new novel environment so that we can feel like we can start to engage in that environment. So social engagement is the first way that we deal with our stress. The second level is the fight or flight. Now, if we aren't able to engage with someone because they're not a present, or if the stress levels go too high too fast, then our brains go into the second mechanism, which is our fight or flight system. And this part of our brain was developed about 250 million years ago. It's a very basic piece of uh, wiring, but very powerful. And what this part of the brain does, our fight or flight system, is it basically looks at the environment and says, there's something really dangerous here and I need to get us out of here. Like, this is not good. So you think about 250 million years ago, we're walking through a field, a big furry animal jumps on and eats our friend beside us, a very scary environment. Our brain learns, hey, next time I see a big furry thing in the distance, that's a scary thing. I'm going to increase the stress levels really fast as I see that thing. And that's going to be a trigger to me that this is not a good place to be. And so therefore, get away. So as we go into that fight or flight mechanism, our brain is reconfiguring itself to deal with this stressful event, what's going on, the stress that's dealing with us. So the first thing it does is shuts down our critical thinking, shuts down our frontal lobe. That takes like one third of our energy in our body. And the brain's like, hey, you don't need to critically think about what you're doing. You just either to fight or get out of here. Like, just get out of here. Like, don't, don't keep doing this to yourself. And so don't think about it. Just work on actions. So we show it such sound critical thinking. Next thing it does is shuts down our stomach. You don't need to process the food that's sitting down there right now that, you know, our, our stomachs take tons of energy to process our food. So it says, don't do that right now. We're going to take the energy and use it other ways. Um, we'll come back and process the food later if, if we need, need to, if we're still alive. Um, and so that's why we get butterflies in our stomachs. It's kind of when the stomach is shutting down.
we start to get sweat, sweaty um, palms because actually our cortisol levels are going up and we're trying to start to get rid of that cortisol. Cortisol is a natural, um, it is a neurochemical that helps with regulation and it's actually a neurotoxin. So if we have too much cortisol in our system, our bodies need to get rid of it. So tears, uh, sweaty palms, and also the, the urge to urinate um, and comes on very quickly as we increase our cortisol levels. Our heart rate starts to go. Our body starts to dump adrenaline into our system to get our heart rate, um, our heart rate up. Um, it starts to divert the um, blood to our um, major muscle groups um, and away from our, our our fingers in that. So we get that cold sweat kind of feeling that begins to 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 emerge. So our bodies are going through a lot of physio characteristics um, to be able to get us ready to try and get us out of that situation. So as we start to feel those physical characteristics, we know that our brain is actually going through a process of moving into that fight or flight mode, which will make it harder and harder for us to actually concentrate on more complex skills because we literally, our brains are shutting themselves down to deal with the more immediate threat. The final thing is if we stay in that fight or flight for too long, then the body just starts to exhaust itself. The brain's exhausted, the body's exhausted, and so the brain does its final defense mechanism, which is puts us into basically the turn off, the freeze position. And that's where it says, okay, this is just too overwhelming right now. We, we just, we can't do it anymore. We're just going to shut things down for a little bit, and then we'll check back in um, later and see if, if we're still around. <laughs> how, how are things going? And this is where depression begins to emerge, because as we go into the freeze section, our bodies literally are dropping down everything. Stress levels, everything is just dropping down, and we cannot actually engage in the environment around us very well. We don't have the awareness. We don't have the energy to do this. We really are putting ourselves in a more um, protective um, situation. One thing we'll be talking about through these videos is that often a lot of us run into a situation where we're moving through the fight or flight to freeze, fight or flight to freeze, fight or flight to freeze um, situation where we're, our stress levels are very high for whatever reason, but they're very high. We're in that fight or flight for a long period of time and we're constantly kind of burning ourselves out as we go up to the freeze, which is the burnout back into the fire flight, back up to freeze, back into the fire flight, which can be over a long time, very, very challenging to be with. So thank you. And I look forward to our ongoing conversations about mental health.